LACERT tax software time-saving tools. LACERT has a number of really excellent tools that help our clients be more efficient, and I want to cover a few of the more popular tools with you now. We're going to discuss something called the missing data utility, how to do K-1 transfer, the different options we have for tax planning, our bank and broker import, how to track client status, and how to do electronic signatures. So let's pull up the 2020 LACERT program and begin. The missing data utility is a really cool feature. What it is, is when you interview a client, invariably there will be something that they don't bring you. What is your current process for keeping track of those things? It's probably more manual with pen and paper. Here's how we do it in LACERT. So I'm gonna use this example file. Name of the client is John and Katie Taxpayer. Um, the client told me that they don't know their Schedule E, maybe some expenses on the rental. They don't know the commissions on their rental property. So instead of writing that down, I simply go to the commissions field, right click my mouse and click missing data, which puts this little red rectangle around the field. So you just go through the screens and mark up the things that are missing. Then there's a button at the top of the page that you can click. I have three things that I marked for this client. Here's my electronic list. It's gathered them from all the different screens. Down below is part two. Instead of you drafting an email, we've already done the work of creating the email. Just hit send and send the client a message. This can save anywhere between 12 and 13 minutes of return when you have the need to track missing information. Lastly, on the client screen, we do give you a column that says missing data. So it's really easy to know with a check that that client has at least one outstanding item. The K1 import tool, not only do we import K1 data from, a, let's say, um, a S Corp to an individual, you can actually do business to business K1 transfers as well. I did it on Harrison Hunt. He is a shareholder of an S corporation. I exported the K1 data, and when I open Harrison's return, the first thing that pops up is a box showing me all of the K1 input imp uh, ready to be imported. All I do is I click accept data, and then the, tra the K-1 transfer is complete. When I open Harrison's return and I go to the pass-through K-1 screen, you can see that all the data came in uh, very seamlessly through the K-1 transfer. Next is tax planning. You have a couple of different options here. One option is you can simply make a copy of the client file and use the copy as your kind of planning tool. The other option is to go into a return itself and maybe you'd like to do a little planning for estimates. The client you know, has certain wages this year, but they say, hey, it's great. My wages are gonna go up by 30K. Now you want the estimates to reflect that. Screen seven, 2021 estimates, includes something called the estimated tax worksheet. Here, you would, you would put in what the new number is. So if the client said they're getting an increase of 30,000, when you see taxpayer with an A code, it means you're adjusting their current wages up or down with a positive or negative number, so I dropped in 30,000. Maybe they had a bad year with COVID, I could go into business income and maybe put a negative amount there as well for us to recompute estimates. If you wanna do more of a projection for estimates, maybe a multi-year thing, top of the screen is a button that says Tax Planner. You can export the client's 2020 return directly into the planning module, and that's what we're doing now. So once the data is exported, we're going to pop up this little box and ask you what kind of a plan would you like to create? The most popular one is this case in year analysis. So down here, it's starting with the year 2020. I can do up to a nine year projection, actually 10 years, but I'll just do three. So you can see that it adds the columns for 21 and 22. The data is automatically imported from the current return. And then I can make a copy of that information from the current year and apply it to the 2021 case and the 2022 case. Now I've got the same information across the board. This is the summary information screen. It's a roll up. Across the top, you have different tabs for the di different sections of a 1040. Click income. You'll see all the income that's been imported from Lestert. If I click rents and royalties, they have two rentals. Maybe the client said, hey, what's going to be the effect of adding another rental in 2021? Click add, go to the 2021 column, add $30,000 in rental income, go back over to the summary, and you can see now our gross or our total income is $312,000. It's added $30,000 and recomputed all the way down. So that's the planning module. Okay. 
Uh, next, we're going to talk about the bank and broker import tool. This is extremely popular. So top of the screen under import, and this is something we include. All of these are included features. Um, go to import, and there are two options for tax import. One is import client data from online accounts. This option actually sends an email to your client. They're going to give you the approval to download information from their bank or broker or W-2 provider. But what I'm gonna do in this example is do it now, which means the client is in your office. Click there. And what's gonna happen here is it's gonna pop up a box. We'll see here in just a second, and it's gonna allow me to log in. And it says, what do I wanna import for this client? Their W-2, their 1099-B, their INT, their DIV. So in this case, I'm gonna say, I wanna pull in their 1099-B. Click start the download. And what we do here is we give you the logos of some of the bigger banks and brokers that our, company, that our customers use. But you, your client or you can just type in the name of the bank or broker right here. Now in terms of the W-2, click start W-2 download. We ask you to enter their employer identification number, or if you sent the email to the client, they would enter this. We would recognize their W-2 provider, and then we would import the data directly into LACERT. So this is an outstanding feature. Now, here's a client on the main screen here. I'll go back out to the main page. And uh, there's another example here, Kevin Reinard. And I'll show you this import. So here's Kevin. I did an import. It says uh, double click. And then as soon as I open it, it says, hey, we recognize there's an ADP W-2 ready to be imported. But if there was a 1098 transaction or interest and dividends, it would list all of them by financial institution. And you would click import selected forms, a really an outstanding feature, 100% accurate because we're getting the information directly from the broker. The next feature I want to talk about is called client status. You know, it's really nice to be able to keep track, especially if you're doing a, a, a bunch of returns, to keep track of where that return is in your process. You can see I have a column that says client status. Some of these say final, in review, information pending, and so on. So how do I change the status? If uh, Sarah Palmer, it was in review, but this return, let's say, was put on extension, we give you a little button at the top that you can click and say, okay, Sarah currently is extended, and click OK. That way, you'll have the label that says extended, which is really nice. You can sort the column and know here's all the extended returns. Here are the ones we're reviewing. You can also go to the left side of the screen in this filter area. This is very popular. Let's say you have 1,000 1040s, but you only want to see those that are in a status of extended. Just click extended. We don't show you all of them. We just limit the list to the ones that are marked extended. The last thing about this feature that's great is when you're setting up LACERT initially, you'll go to settings options. There is a tab in the options. This is where you set all your preferences in LACERT, like what you're going to print for each tax return and the statuses. But we give you five. If you don't like the ones we give you, you can double click and change the names of them. So it really is up to you what you want to call these check-in points. But I can tell you, having been with LACERT as long as I have, this is one of the most popular features because it just keeps everyone on track, knowing exactly where the tax returns are in the overall process. The last feature I want to show you is electronic signatures. And this is something that was, uh, it was already uh, widely used by, by our customers, but in a COVID environment, we've seen the numbers really spike. So I'm going to show you an example here of how to send an electronic signature. It's pretty simple. We use DocuSign as our backend partner for all the signatures. You do not need to license DocuSign separately because everything is built into the software. The process begins on the client screen where you see the e-signature status. Simply click Request. We already know what's in Kevin's return, so we automatically will produce a federal and a California. But if Kevin had income property over a number of states, it would list every state requiring a signature. It also wants, by default, to include a watermarked client copy of the return. So when the client opens their document through DocuSign, not only, not only will they see their 8879s, they'll see an entire client copy to, to be able to review. Okay, hit Next. And then what we're going to see here is the building of the docs. Here's the 8879 Fed. Then we create the state. And on the next screen, I'll show you some different options that you have as you're sending uh, electronic signatures. One of the nice things about this tool, by the way, is 
about 90% of the taxpayers who sign this way are doing it on their mobile device like their iPhone. It makes it so much easier for them. Here's what we're sending. Hit next. Here's Kevin. Here's his email. Here's the email message that you can change if you like and click save as template. Hit next. And it also does include the ability to send reminders. So if Kevin doesn't do it within 24 hours, you can set this to, you know, one day, two days, whatever you like. There's also in LoCert the option to request a payment. This is very popular. So let's say the amount of your invoice for this client that you generated in LoCert was 175 bucks, or maybe you don't do your billing in LoCert and this is a $400 tax return. You set the return due date or the payment due date, then hit next. So what'll happen in this case, it'll send two emails. One email is, please sign your 8879s. The other email is, please pay us um, and you, so that way you can knock out two things at once. Hit next. Here's your summary screen. Then you just hit send and the client gets the email. The other nice thing about electronic signatures in LACERT is we have a thing at the top called the e-signature dashboard. So this is a way to help you keep track of did the client sign? Did they not sign? Click that. And you'll see here, it'll show me every single client that I've sent one to and it'll track the statuses of all of them. Currently, my status is, say, multiples, but yours, yours would say either sent or complete or partially signed. So this way, you can keep total track of what's going on with uh, related to your electronic signatures. So those are some pretty nice tools in the cert. Certainly not everything we do, but some of the things that are most popular among our client base. Thank you.